Yes, that'd be cool. Love that album. Did you ever get to see them? Uh, nope. Nope, never Nancy saw Motorhead. Nancy Motorhead twice. Nope. Darn. Cool. That's a, that was a great band. And they were, and you know the they thing about being loud, loud that's, yeah. that's no lie. <laughs> I bet, I bet. No, oh, man, it was painful. Um, Guns N' Roses rescheduled North American stadium tour dates to be announced next week. I bet you Corey is just like hanging out by his uh, oh, yeah, computer he, to find yeah. that out. He's like, oh, come on, come on, come on. When, when, when are you going to be here? I can't believe all. I, I've got a lot of friends that bought that VIP package Oh, to meet them. And mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, really? You want to meet Axl Rose? I mean, I mm-hmm. like listening to him. Yeah. It's hard to you believe know? that he would even do those. But I guess age money is about talk, my age. man. Oh yeah, money and age <laughs> come yep. to your senses. Maybe I shouldn't be such a jerk anymore. Why? He's probably thinking, <laughs> why am I meeting all these people and not getting paid for it? Yeah, exactly. Everybody else is, so let's do this. Um, let me see. The Scorpions announced rescheduled dates for the Sin City Nights in Las Vegas residency May eighth through May thirtieth. Yeah, sounds. Oh, We're going to talk to Klaus Mine in a couple weeks. Oh, cool. I guess Queensryche's on the going to be opening for him. It's not That might be worth day. a trip to that might be worth a trip to uh to Vegas. Yeah, definitely. All right, the Golden Gods, America's first ever hard rock and heavy metal music award show to return in 2021. Hopefully we'll be nominated. Yeah. We never get somewhere. nominated. Pe- <laughs> People's Choice 13 years running never nominated. No. Nope. No, nope, they just don't. They don't care. No. Nope. They don't like us. Um, KISS announces 2021 European tour. They're never going to get to retire the way <laughs> things are going. I don't think they ever will anyway, so, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, that's true. They'll never be able to finish this tour. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, after this tour, it's a Vegas residency. You know it is. Yeah, you'd figure they'd have to do something. Yeah. Start They're going to milk that. Like that. Yeah. ACDC, four more uh, official jigsaw puzzles to be released in October. Highway to Hell, if you want blood, let there be rock and black ice. Nice. Those be sitting there. I, I'd rather have the back in black where <laughs> they're all black. <laughs> yeah, man, like, that would be a tough puzzle like to put the, together. Like the Beatles' White Album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Huh? Or Spinal, uh, spinal Tap. The yeah. Smell the glove. It's all just a black cover. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or, yeah, Metallica, yeah. Good luck. Yeah, um, really. <laughs> race car previously owned by Eddie Van Halen to be auctioned off. I didn't know Ooh. he owned a race car. Well, it's just like one of them Ferrari kind of things. Mm, or something like that. Okay. Well, we should probably go in on it, though, you know. It's probably not going to I got a couple bucks. I got like, yeah. I think I got six. So. Okay. I'll throw in. I can I can meet you with that. So, All right. Um, okay. Well, we can get it for good, 12 bucks. It's ours. Good start. Um, except has uh, resumed recording their new album. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. They're, they're, since they got the new singer, they, their albums have been outstanding. Definitely, yeah, I'm definitely liking them a lot. Yep. Uh, Black Label Society will definitely be making a new album, hopefully sooner than later. No. That's good to hear. Cool, cool. And as long as it isn't like you know, Zach, I love you, man. You're like one of my favorite musicians. Quit doing ballads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dad. Please. Yeah, keep it heavy, man. Can make that thing scream. Do that pitch harmonic thing yeah. that you love doing and just get it. Yep. All right? Uh, Doro announces worldwide live stream of final show of her drive-in cinema tour. Yeah, doing those drive-in cinema things. I didn't uh, know she did. Well, yeah, she didn't she do it did, here. She no, did it in Europe, Europe, right? Yeah, over in yeah. Europe somewhere. Yeah, I guess okay. we did a, have done a few of them. You, people just go and sit in their cars. <laughs> <laughs> watch you goes up there. I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but hey. Garth you know. Brooks did it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and he made a ton of money doing it. Um, Dokken performs with uh, guitarist Reb Beach in Virginia, also plays socially distant concert in Arkansas. Yeah, and Don, man, did you listen to any of that? See any of that? Or listen to any? I, listened, oh. I listened to about oh. 30 seconds of it and shut oh. off. As soon as Don starts singing, I, I let him get to the chorus, and then I'm like, Don, if you didn't want to do this, you should have said, I don't want to do this. Cause you're, you you you're, can't be that broke, dude. You're hurting your legacy, man. Yeah. Because you just go up there and you talk the words. There's, yeah. there's no melody to anything. It's all 
And, uh, I could have done better, and I I can't sing worth a crap. Uh, well, and here's the other thing. Mick Brown's gone. Yeah, he didn't have any of his old bandmates. Pilsen's gone. Levin's gone. Um, yeah. I mean, he did have Reb Beach, but, I mean, seriously? But, but Reb hasn't been working on his die. He's, you know, polished up for a couple weeks, and yeah. He ain't. It ain't like having John Levins up there, who's been with you for years and years and years. Who's still, or even Lynch. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He. It did not sound good. No, I. I heard it. Last time I went and saw Doc, and I was kind of like, Ugh. yeah, this might be the last time. Yeah. Um, ha- has Priest, nothing. Richie- to, has nothing to do with the whiskey and the smoking. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. No. Um, let me see. Where was I? Oh, Judas Priest Ricky uh, Richie Faulkner uh, welcomes his first child uh, with George Lynch's daughter. Wow. Hmm. Oh, wow. George Lynch's Bet that daughter. kid will be able to play guitar. Ah, I've got a little guitar player ready to go, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lynch mom to release Wicked Sensation Reimagined. And you know what? Oh. I already called my buddy Anthony Esposito, who played on the original. And, uh, and I'm thinking about having him on the show to talk about that. Yeah, we'll have to listen to that. I'm I'm hoping that they'll do like they did to that one album, when they drop dropped everything down low, tuned it lower, and changed everything. Made it grunge. Yeah, yeah. or made it. No. Yeah, and it's like. Ugh. Do you remember the third Lynch Mob album, Lynch Biscuit? Oh yeah, the, that's what I'm talking about when they did oh, that. Oh god, that sucked. Yeah. All right, and last but not least, Dave Mustaine Rust in Peace book uh, to include forward by Slash. Ooh. I'd like to read Dave Mustaine's story. I'd like to hear his side of the Metallica stuff. I've got his book. I don't think I've read it. Darn. Really? Yeah, I've been waiting for the movie. Dude, you guys quit buying the, books and waiting for the movie. I, I look at the pictures, and I'm like, oh, that'll be in the movie. Oh, that'll be in the movie. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh. And if you move them real fast, it kind of like moves, so, you know. But, yeah, they, they don't put enough pictures in there, though. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you you need to stick to coloring books. That's right. All right. Uh, coming up next hour, we're going to talk to Corey Glover of Living Color and uh, Disciples of Verity. That's coming up on Rock and Metal Revival. There's brand new music from Disciples of Verity. It is called The Flow on Rock and Metal Revival. And uh, I am uh, fortunate enough to have with me the voice of Disciples of Verity, or you might know him from uh, Living Color. I'm talking about Corey Glover. Corey, welcome to Rock and Metal Revival. How's it going, Red? How you been? It's, it's going outstanding, and it is so good to uh, hear your voice with some new music and, and this new project called Disciples of Verity. And uh, give us a—I mean, this is kind of like an all-star band, isn't it? Yeah, sort of. You know, it's myself and and Corey Pierce from God Forbid, and George is, George Pond is from Negative Sky, and he used to be in Second Skin, and Mark Monjoy is used to, was in Second Skin, and and uh, Danny uh, Puma was also in Negative Sky. So it's a, it's a bunch of folks, in, and, and we have guests on here, like uh, we have Morgan Rose, um, got Loomis. We've got a bunch of folks on, on this record that, that we're very proud of. So how did this project all come together? Had, had you guys all worked together in the past and just decided, hey, let's get together and, and try something out? It was basically we all got hoodwinked into doing this. <laughs> um, we did. George had a project that he was working on. He had this music he was working on. He wanted, he called, we were at, we were at uh, this music convention called NAM in, in California. And he said, I got these songs. I need some lyrics and I need some vocals. You want to do it? Yeah, no problem. And so the two songs turned into an album. Like, how did that happen? I don't know how I, di- how I did that. And they did to all of us for some reason. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we were, all of a sudden we're in a band. Like how, how? You know, and uh, right now uh, with with the COVID thing going on, uh, you know, not a lot of chances for people to get out and see live music. So a lot of people are discovering a new bands like this uh, because we're all mm. we're all jonesing for some new music. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say we've been we're we're doing our best to. To provide as much music as we possibly can <laughs> over these times. It's definitely necessary. Well, I guess I, the, the you know I guess the immediate question uh, is when it all decides to let us all go back and enjoy some live music. Is this something you guys are thinking about? Maybe taking out on the road at all, or doing doing some live oh, shows? Oh, most definitely. As soon as we as soon as we can, we're going to go out and play this. Okay. Um, before this all started, the beginning of the year, we did a couple of shows, and that was fun. 
and we realized that's how, how you know, that's how you test a band. You know, you spend all the time in the studio with these guys. That's one thing. But you get in a van and drive somewhere, that's a whole other, a whole other animal. Well, I guess my my question, I was going to ask that question when you just said about sitting in the studio together. I know a lot of days when like bands like this get together where people are all in different bands, it's okay, here's my here's my uh, part, here's on 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 MP3 and here's and y'all just get, it gets put together in the studio by a producer, but did you guys actually go into the studio and 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 bang this out? Kind of. Some of it some of it was done with some of us, but not all of us. This was which was weird like some, it would be me and George and, and and the guitar player, and then Corey would come along later on, and it was it was always a different sort of uh, setup. But for the most part, it was basically me and George, and the and the music was done at some other point, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was like like the things were done. But when we got then we got into rehearsals, and and it just sort of clicked, and it was like, okay, we know we got that part. Then this next part is to go on the road and see how that works. Well, was this something that you, that you had written a lot of songs, or did you guys all bring your own songs to the table? Um, most you know, of the songs, yes, most of the songs are George's. George wrote, wrote, wrote most of the music. I, he and I wrote uh, the the bulk of the lyrics. Um, so we all had he and I both had a hand in making this what it is. I know, uh, and you know, and there was production from from Corey Pierce as well. Mm-hmm. So he did a lot of production work as well. So it was, it was pretty much collaborative. I know when I was telling some people that I I, had, I was going to talk to you today, and then before we went on, I told you that I'd seen you play with the Rolling Stones. They're like, so does it sound like Living Color? I go, the vocals have that Living Color thing, but this is way off <laughs> from, from what you're doing. You did in, in Living Color, and I don't even know how to explain. I just it's like a new breed of metal. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's this is a real sort of real metal record that I've made, you know, stuff we I did with living, living color, the stuff I still do with living color is, is, is hard rock. And it has some metal elements to it. This is strictly a metal thing. Um, with me in there singing. So <clears throat> I don't, I don't know if, I, if everyone would consider me the ultimate metal singer. I'm not, you know, that's Dio. Um, <laughs> but, it's Amen. Not, but it's not, um, but I'm not Dio. So I did what I do. Well, it, you know, I, I guess I got to ask you, Corey. It, it's uh, even if it's not what you do, is is it something that you really enjoy? I mean, are are you oh, inside absolutely. you're just a hardcore metal guy? Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've loved hardcore music for a very long time. I'm the biggest fan of uh, of, of Slayer. I'm the biggest fan of Megadeth. Uh, you know, before that, it was it was Bad Brains and that kind of stuff. I've I've listened. To, this is a part of my DNA, exactly. You know, as much as anything else is. All right. Well, I got to. Here's a the question I want to throw out to you. One of my favorite tunes you did with Living Color is "Open Letter to a Landlord." And with all the crap mm-hmm. that's going on in this country, do you, do you ever wonder back and look at boy, and I recorded that back so many years ago, and now it's still, uh, you know, well, that's, that's that's the point we've been making lately. You know, it's the 30th anniversary of the rec- of our album "Times Up" this year, 30th anniversary, mm-hmm. and the stuff that we talked about and on "Times Up" and "Vivid." Are still happening now that nobody that nothing has really changed and that's that's kind of disconcerting in and of itself you know it's like we did these songs so that people would realize that this is what's going on and maybe they, they they'd make a positive change toward fixing some of the stuff but you didn't no so yeah i i just i i was listening to that on the way in to do the interview today and i i'm like mm-hmm. you know what that song still grabs you today and i go that's yeah that's what i was thinking hey you 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 told us about this 30 years ago and <laughs> and now it's happening again you know and uh right that song well, is just never changed that's, that's, that's what's sad about it nothing's changed nothing what has think it had it is just that is just sad. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, working with Morgan Rose and and Phil Demel and and Jeff Loomis and those guys. How did they all get involved in this project? Again, it, it, whenever you talk about disciples of Verity, there's a, there's a phrase you should keep in mind: blame everything on George Pond. <laughs> just because just, just he talked everybody into doing this. Okay, he made. It, 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 he made everything happen, and hats off to him for, for doing so because he did an amazing job. 
All right. Well, we I want to play another cut off this, uh, Corey. I love this album. Tell where is the best place for people to find out more about Disciples of Verity? Um, you can check on. 